Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Armstrong here from Adai Miniatures and today I'm gonna be torturing this little creature to turn it into this. So I got this uh, ma I don't know what name of the car it is. No matter, but you know, I did the octopus car. I did the tank-ish car. I'm still waiting for the video to actually upload to YouTube. But I have this idea, you know, that you know, a little bit of magic is always nice in the in our lives. So why not cut a car in half in this direction, you know? Just like this. Yeah. So that's where the torture gonna start with this one. So I just grab a hand saw and I am very happy that I picked this one because it's a plastic one. Yeah, the body is plastic. I ain't gonna be so lucky with the base as the base is metal, unfortunately. But the body is plastic, so I'm gonna be able to cut it in half. Yeah, so this is of course gonna damage the the uh, casting itself a little bit, but what can I do, you know? Madness must come first, then we're gonna think about this would be damaged. <laughs> so this is very uncomfortable to hold, actually. <laughs> But very easy to cut. So I will cut it in half and be right back. And I have this little car cut into two halves. Yeah, not perfectly through the middle. It's kind of went a little bit towards the back, towards the left hand side and the front towards the right hand side. Yeah, and here you can see just fell apart. So you may ask. Armstrong, why did you cut the car in half? Yeah, and my first idea for the day was two face, but then I thought to myself, hmm, you know, twice the comic book trope in a week, that's a little bit of an overkill. Yeah. So I decided to do something more organic. Yeah. Uh, what I mean about uh, by it. I want to make a monster that is actually considering itself as a car. And it got cut in half and tried to hold itself together. Or maybe it's cut the car in half, you know, to show itself. So I have this cut and now, oh, come on. Now this doesn't want to fall apart. <laughs> yeah, so I will glue the glass in because I want it to be in here and I don't care about the inside insert but it have the back so definitely as well yeah and I need to clean this I have a fresh very sharp blade so should be easy yeah like cutting through the plastic was easy then when I went into the base yeah it stopped being easy <laughs> Yeah, but I have this and I want to do, I want to cut out as well a mask, yeah, the, the bonnet, am I right? I think that I'm right. I want to cut out the bonnet, maybe like this and this to keep some sort of uh, remains of a full car. And then I'm gonna see where I go from there. So I'm just gonna cut this because, you know, cutting isn't very entertaining. I'll be right back. I have I have it all now cut into pieces. So what I want to do is to first of all glue in the glass. I want it to stay. And you know when it is in the pieces it don't want to stay where it's supposed to be. I have the glass in and I'm gonna just put the insert the the seats you know everything in as well 
I need to cut out this bit here just this part it's gonna be an issue I think you know this is right now more of a experimenting part yeah, prototyping but well all of my cars are just prototypes at the end of the day I don't produce anymore so <laughs> one of a kind yeah, I don't need that so I have one side done now I need to do exactly the same with the other one and yeah I was thinking you know maybe it is uh, you know the the idea is that maybe it was some sort of a monster that uh, took a shape of a car or lives inside of a you know car in the scrapyard or whatever yeah but just you know me I want I like to have fun with my builds and since this is post post apocalyptic world you know all of that can really could really happen in it so now this hmm. need to actually clean the edges a little bit so when you cut like that be careful to don't damage your fingers yeah if you do that yeah don't blame me it's your own clumsiness Always you need to be very gentle and very slow. So, yeah, this is the wrong way. So, I want this to be open, but I want this to be open like under a weird angle. Like, if you watched a Blade movie, uh, it was, I think, Blade 2, and they have this kind of weird vampire. That his jaw was opening like four ways yeah so i want to do this in here oops there's the piece <laughs> it just vanished from my view but thanks god this is a plastic so whoa too much super glue. Okay, the end just here. There we go. This is kind of an half open and I want to do the exactly the same thing on the other side. So again just this area. And I need to clean on the inside here and the corner. Now just some super glue. And this, I know that this would probably fit better into Halloween build, but I didn't think about stuff like about something like that <laughs> during the Halloween. So, oopsie. <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry. Mm. No, that's the wrong one, and that's the right one. So I'm just gonna glue this together. I don't know where I have contact points because the chassis got a little bit bent when I was cutting it. But I guess it could work to the advantage of the build actually.
Gucken. Now, two pieces. And what I want to do, I want to leave a split, like a gap in here. And I don't know how big. But let's start with some guts. Yeah, so I will take I will take a piece of plastic card and glue it in here and probably something in here on the seats. So it's gonna be the split. Then we're gonna know the distance. This is just these are just chunks of plastic card that I have lying around different thicknesses and whatever. So yeah, let's try in here. Oh, super glue. I think that is way too far. Yep, this seems more reasonable. Although still, this is a big gap, you know, I'm gonna have some hot glue scoping to do because I don't want to use proper putty as it's gonna take a few hours to dry but I'm not 100% on board with a hot glue either so you know just me being me I like hot glue for terrain. I don't particularly like it for miniatures. I said that when I was building the tanker and I stay, still gonna stay by it. And with this scalper blades you have to be careful as they tend to be brittle and they can break on you which wouldn't be much fun when you are cutting towards yourself so please be careful if you try this at home of course If you don't, then there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> All right. Now I just need to push this down. Sorry, I know that gluing is the most entertaining part of the videos. Is my awesome jokes. Right, I'm gonna glue it and be back when it's done because this is taking ages. After a copious amount of super glue and baking soda, I managed to stick it back together with a little gap in between. And I picked up some uh, pipes that I made for whenever I have a spare, you know, green stuff. When I was sculpting, I always, you know, just make those pipes <clears throat> for use later on. And you know, this is exactly the moment they were created for. So, just need to get the tweezers. And I just want to, you know, like stick them inside 
just to connect two sides of the car and create sort of a guts inside and before I couldn't see anything inside of the purple window now I can see way too much yeah but this is the general idea of this car for now just see what I can squeeze where oh. see that isn't as easy as it was in my head because you know I could probably just glue one side first and then the other side but then harder to do one side yeah I have this inside just drop of super glue in here it should hold and if it's gonna be visible I'm not sure let's get two drops of super glue on top here I straight away regret it because it's on my mat already This isn't working. I need to do this. Just empty some super glue onto the base, and then I'm gonna be putting the pieces into super glue and then trying to get them to stick. So, one, the other side. So just you know I'm gonna be filling this up with these tentacles just to create this kind of mess of cables or in this case they're supposed to be guts of some sort of a monster yeah, like in 80s there was plenty of this car monsters in movies I guess people were afraid of cars for some reason don't know why I can see it isn't easy so I'm gonna fill it up you know connect both parts with what I have in here and then I'm gonna come back and we are gonna figure out what to do with the rest of it and I managed to fill up the gaps inside with the piping which is supposed to look like gaps like guts and I have some in here <clears throat> In the meantime, I cut a couple of pieces of plastic out, you know, roughly triangular to work as some sort of, you know, metal jagged teeth inside. So, I'm just gonna place one in here. some baking soda on it so it cut straight away and I'm sorry for showing you only my hands <laughs> it's the beauty of me of my video making I always screw it up like that so I have like four giant teeths you know and what I want to do now now I need to do something that I was trying to avoid but you know I think that with this project it was unavoidable which is green stuff yeah 
I have mealy food as well somewhere, but I'm gonna only use probably green stuff. Uh, just grab a blade and cut a maybe this much of the blue part and about the same amount of the yellow. And why do I want the green stuff? Uh, Besides the fact that I can scope, you know, some stuff inside, like, you know, uh, I want to give him a tongue. Yeah, I want to give this car a tongue, so I will try to scope one, and that's gonna be a challenge as I suck at scoping. I do some basic stuff, like, tongues are not the worst thing to scope, I guess, but I'm very impatient when it comes to scoping, so. You know, impatience in this case isn't advisable. But yeah. So I think that I have nice and even green here now. And I'm just thinking how much I'm gonna need probably about this much but as well I need to close this gap inside so first I will take some green stuff and I need to look for some tools do I have any out I have the smallest ones that's fine for this size of build But yeah, I want to make like gum inside, you know. So, there we go, sculpting with Armstrong. Yeah. It's, if you watch Minecraft, it's like redstone with bid ups. Straight away a failure. And you see that this tooth that I applied in here actually started moving, so I need to get it back into position. And now this. And just texturing this a little bit. And in here, I want it just to look, you know, squishy and soft. Like an inside of the mouth should, so. Not, no jagged edges in here. And I need to fill up this gap as well here. So I'm gonna just do a little bit more green stuff, just connecting these two pipe thingies. And again, like green stuff, I like green stuff and I dislike it. There is like, it's too sticky in my opinion. Yeah, but then the flexibil flexibility of it once it is a little bit more dry, is great, yeah? Like even if you have it fully dried, it's still gonna keep some flexibility, which is, again, great, yeah? And when I, when milliput, yeah? Milliput is okay, but it doesn't have this flexibility. And this is actually a advantage for me when I'm working with it. But it's more kind of brittle. So both of the materials have issues, yeah? And in this case, I'd rather be using green stuff than milliput. And now try to 
make the tongue. And I know that I could do some sort of a monster is, you know, jumping out, split. Actually, split tongue isn't a bad idea. So, split tongue. <laughs> And of course, you know, I'm gonna leave a fingerprints on that, which isn't the greatest thing in the world, but I can stick it inside now. It is just, you know, a piece of green stuff. This kind of like a line in the middle of the tongue of both of them. So this one is going here. And this is going here. So I can Touch this. Yeah, I have. And what I want to do extra, and I don't know if it's gonna work because, like I said, I'm too impatient for green stuff and for generally sculpting. I was actually saying to Shadow and Son that I'm as patient as the young guy because I want everything being done straight away. And with sculpting you should, I should at least wait now until the part that I already put on dry off and then try to apply another piece and then another piece and another piece. There is one little issue with that. That would take a couple of days of sculpting and I don't see myself doing that for a couple of days. And I want to put this video up tomorrow so Oh, come on, be nice to me. So I'm really hoping that I'm gonna manage to pull what I'm trying to like, I want to put like some sort of tendon connecting this with the rest of the jaw. And I know it isn't easy. It's somewhat look as I wanted it. Now the other one. Come on. Sometimes you would need extra arm for this scope thing. So, yeah, I have a one tongue and then the other one split tongues. They do not look great, but I assume that they're gonna look passable after I'm, after they dry. This probably because of the sculpting gonna be about an hour long or even longer video. So yeah, for now I'm gonna leave it till tomorrow and then I'm gonna get back on it and finish the build. I might have, you know, fill up a little bit of this gap in here because I don't have anything interesting in here. So I might just, you know, spread the green stuff inside just to fill it up. But that's it for now. And, you know, you will see me tomorrow while I'll be, you know, doing something more to it. When I woke up this afternoon, the green stuff was dry. 
but there was plenty of holes, you know, which you can see through to the, actually through the car. So I decided to mix a little bit more green stuff and just add, you know, a little bit more fleshiness into it. And for some weird reason, I even did finish the bottom side. Well, there is no weird reason, actually, you know, I, you can leave it flipped when it is crashed, you know, on the table to show the wreckage. But uh, my reasoning was this, that this layer actually uh, prevent you from seeing through the car itself. Yeah? So like there is like some small places where you can see under into the into the other pipes, you know, being here like and here, but I wanted to just close up the areas that was mm, too visible and of course you know I put some fleshiness in here and in here as well I don't know if it, this is visible on the camera and so I have this you know giant gaping mouth open the tongue sticking out and now I just need to fix the wheels to this and you know I just look at this and I have this feeling that they do not really fit well because of this knobbly knob yeah it's good for the car to roll but this one have no chance of rolling anymore <laughs> especially that if you look at it the one part is slightly back more back than the other one so it is crooked altogether yeah and I want this just to hold nicely and they're gonna be using the same wheels that the car came with so there's no confusion. <laughs> yeah. Come on. I just want to take out these pieces. Alright. This is gone. And again, sanding is one of the most entertaining things, you know, in these videos. But yeah, I have those wheels. Come on. And like, I was thinking about, you know, doing some sort of more of a conversion in here, adding some armor plates and so on and so forth. But I think that this car by itself is converted enough. Yeah. So no armor plating. And I need to take out the new super glue because I just wasted one yesterday, not wasted, but used up. So yeah, it turned out that those uh, little uh, bottles are much better because even if they get stuck and you know you cannot open them anymore you don't care about the tiny amount of super glue in it so yeah and when you look at this you know all the wheels gonna be slightly crooked and i'm completely fine with it Yeah, this like most of my cars are rollers after I finish with them but this one definitely ain't gonna be one of those and, you know I can see benefit of rollers and of non rollers you know for me those cars are still just toys yeah, I don't go saying that it is a model and you know you have to be careful with it it's just a toy all of my models are actually toys I allow my nephews to play with them when they was kids so yeah you can see, you know, some kind of a monster mash inspiration here. And, you know, now I just have to black bomb it. So I'll be back when, actually I'm going to use gray instead of black, but I'll be back when it is done. And I got everything painted gray, but I actually decided to cover the bodywork in black as I think that this is going to work very well in black. So a little bit of dry brushing of the pieces that I want to be metal, which is not too much. I want to have the vents here to be metallic. Yeah. And I think about the teeth 
Yeah, I could probably do them, you know, more flashy, but at the end of the day, it is the amalgamation of a creature and a machine, so why not metallic teeth? Yeah. And as well, I'm just gonna do a little bit of the dry brush of the bottom, as you know. I already have painted it grey, so you know, it's gonna take dry brush nicely. Alright, and now I want to um, do the fleshy parts, and fleshy parts I start with a red gore, yeah, from Games Workshop. I have this paint for quite a while. Yeah, so just, I just, you know, wash the brush so there is a lot of moisture in it. And it helps to spread the paint easier into the cracks. And you can see how <laughs> weird this is. Like, trying to paint a, a car fleshy is not really the easiest thing to do. And yeah. And you can hear my wife playing with her friends. So yeah, I just need a smaller brush to get into the fleshy parts that I want in here. And you know, the thing with this paint is that I'm probably gonna have to apply at least two layers of it. And as well, I want the tongue to be purple instead of being red yeah oh, a little bit of red on the teeth wouldn't actually hurt at all and then I'm gonna have to figure out what color I want to use have the pipes of yeah so you know they supposed to be guts of that creature so yeah so I will just allow this to dry put another layer on and I'll be right back and now the fleshy parts are dry. It looks nice and gory inside, which is exactly what I wanted. But I want to add a one more paint. It is a flesh wash. Yeah, I always like this paint. It makes everything look wet. Yeah. Like I, f I remember painting my first Demon Prince from Games Workshop. And I used this paint that, you know, the demon prince just became so fleshy, like, you know. I loved the effect that it gave me back then, and, you know, I still stand by this paint. And you can see the difference that, is, that it makes straight away. It looks like something just... You know, just got tore apart and tried to get back together. So yeah, I will dry it off and be right back with more steps. You can trust me or not, but this wash is actually dry. And I know that it looks like it is still wet, which was exactly what I was looking for. And now, the purple tongue. You know, the tongue is split, covering one of the lights in here. I have rich purple in here, which is kind of more of a fantasy color, I would think. I was thinking about something more bluish, but I couldn't find my other purples. So I'm just gonna be going with this. And like some animals have the purple tongue. And that's exactly why I'm going with this one. And yep, I have 
This one done. Yeah. And you know, now after this, I just gonna add, I gonna need to dry this and add some wash to it as well. And again, dry. The hair dryer really helps, you know, to expedite the painting process. Now I have this shade Dru Druhari Violet and I just want to apply it all over the stones. Yeah. Just to add the purpleness to them. Yep. Yeah. And this is it here and drying again. I've been painting fleshy stuff for a while and I always like to go with this kind of very red color but I noticed that you know because of years of painting Nurgle stuff as my first Warhammer 40k army was Nurgle I like to get, just add a little bit of green into the painting scheme yeah like maybe those uh, guts inside are kind of rotting or rotted or whatever yeah maybe his insides aren't actually as red as ours so yeah just a little hint of green this is a ogreen green i think that i used here yeah so just tiny bit here and there yeah and it just gonna give this kind of pause uh, feel to it especially that i don't want the full pronounce you know like of the paint just as much as i have right now and now probably the hardest to pull off idea yeah, I want actually it could be easier with this green now that I think about it I want the glass to be yellowish yeah so why because you know this uh, this glass uh, the shape of it looks like some sort of eyes yeah so i was thinking that if i just painted this yellowish color i can just add hints that they are actually eyes for this monstrosity i'm not very good at doing that here but yeah I will let it dry and throw another layer on it it should be fine so I'll be right back and the green color created this weird looking ice but I have a yellow up here that's kind of separated yeah but I will try to just yellow it a little bit more Okay, I know that this color is going to be my undercut for the yellow because, my goodness, this is the easiest yellow that I ever applied. And like plenty of people when they paint yellow, they use a orange as a base because from there they can go, you know, have shading this way. But this Ogryn Camo really works well for me. I am extremely happy about that color. So yeah, again, hair dryer. Now, since they are eyes of a some sort of a beast, I want to add a red tinting along the bottom here. Yeah, so I have very watered down 
red paint and you know just a little bit of tint yeah I don't want it to be red I want to to be like you know like in uh, cartoons when someone is angry you know and their eyes get red I want this kind of look yeah and now just a little bit of black which I still have on my palette and just this doesn't look what I wanted it to look like so I try to remove it and I smudge everything lovely so maybe hmm, do I have any blues in here browns greens oh green yellow and green eyes yeah that's gonna work much better so just you know too much just And I know it made it a little bit cartoony, yeah, but <laughs> why not? And uh, maybe white. Hopefully this white is thicker than I remember. Oh my goodness. So, yeah. Just a little bit of white and just just adding these little lines in here like you have in the eyeball. But yeah, this one is done. And do I want to do anything else to it? I don't think so. I'm actually. <laughs> I just hid it from the camera. Yeah, I just added these little lines in here. Sorry if it was out of the camera. Yeah, it's kind of cartoonish, kind of gross, and kind of weird. But this is, you know, perfectly something for me. So I'm just gonna clean up the, te the desk and throw it on the spin table now. And here it is my take on the monster car. I know that the eyes kind of turn out kind of derpy, and you know cartoonish but what can we do about it um, I could if I use if I just leave the pupils and just leave the you know a little bit of red tint under it it would probably work yeah but I'm quite happy with it it's odd it's weird it's uh, quirky yeah maybe a little bit of weathering would do nice for it but I'm actually like for the first time I just make completely clear car which is fine I think and you know that's it for today so if you like it please uh, like rate comment subscribe you know all of the youtube craziness and of course have a lovely day everyone take care